I want to start by actually acknowledging the fact that I'm here standing before you because some many years ago, there were people like you in my school who ensured that I got the right type of education and I got the right type of exposure to a lot of things so I could progress in journey in my journey of life and be here standing addressing you. So I recognize that the intellect and the capability in all of you is far greater than at least me who stands here to address uh, you. So I want to thank uh, all my principals uh, who were there and I was at a very interesting stage of life and the 10 plus 2 was being implemented or experimented. So perhaps uh, Mr. Kurvila Jacob, who was my pre principal at that point of time, uh, decided to implement it in his school before the government took it over. And we, our batch had the unfortunate experience of doing in 12 years what people in Delhi did in 11 years. But it was interesting. And again, like I said, I wanted to begin by uh, paying my respect to at least my uh, principals who were uh, responsible for me being here now. The idea uh, of my presentation really was to talk about Catch Them Young and our role in evolving a system that each child becomes a global citizen. So it's very interesting, you know, when you look at education, we believe it's attending classes, memorizing, tutorials, assignments, examinations, and, and really Rabindranath Tagore actually uh, caught this in very early. And a lot of us say that perhaps this is really true today. So if we look at uh, what's happening, what the world of work talks about the people who are coming out of the uh, education system, we believe that we are actually living in parallel uh, universe. And the symptom is that, you know, perhaps not in the schools represented here, but in the whole education system, we're having a huge dropout between class one and the undergraduate level. So the challenge is that how do we actually address this dropout and how do we prepare children for the future? Now, if you look at uh, the global models of skilling in schools and higher education and really preparing children for the future, they tend to start pretty early uh, compared to our late start there. So I think in this uh, you know, um, seminar or this conference that we have here, Catching them young is, is very appropriate. And most of the developed countries uh, have a system by which they allow progression in, in, in the whole education and training system. I know it's a complicated slide, but it's just an example. That they allow kids to experiment, to uh, drop in and out of school, to work, but at the same time, give you a pathway. It's not only UK, but it's also in, 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 in Switzerland, where you can uh, look at the two parallel uh, systems and how they are linked. Similarly, in Australia. Now, the reason why I'm actually uh, talking to you about this, because something very similar is happening in India, and it impacts uh, all of you uh, in your work that you're doing, and will actually enlarge as we go forward. So the first thing that we are trying to do is trying to align the type of competencies that we get in the education system or training system uh, to what is required in the place of work. You know, a lot of the debate goes on. The educationists say that, you know, we're not preparing children, or we are giving them an education. We're not preparing them for work. Now, teacher is also a profession, is also work. Uh, a researcher is also a profession, is also work. So whatever we do, in this uh, in life is actually loosely termed as work or a profession or an activity and how do we get uh, to align the curriculum and competencies that we deliver in schools and colleges to the world of work so we're getting the employers to get together and create uh, councils that will determine these uh, competencies if you look at it this is not a new phenomenon it existed in Indi india much earlier and they were known as Shrinis or Gilds uh, there. And we are trying to replicate that which worked well in ancient and medieval India uh, to the modern uh, kind of uh, system. So 31 are in place and more are being formed as we talk. In fact, I go back from this meeting into a proposal approval committee to look at a coating sector skill council where the, where the... Now, what they have done, which is very interesting, is that at different levels, they have created competency frameworks. Now, competency is three aspects. 
knowledge, attitude, and skills. And the knowledge part is being defined in a very different way. So typically, we, uh, we look at uh, you know, class 9, 10, 11, 12 in those things currently. And we say so-and-so has fifth failed, or 10th passed, or 12th passed, or 12th failed, whatever it is. And that doesn't tell us anything. Because the competency for what is required in class X in a place in India, but not perhaps in the CBSE schools, because you follow a, a common uh, curriculum, is not the same. And nobody understands what uh, a 10th or a 12th uh, means in terms of numeric ability or in terms of uh, you know, uh, English. And does a plumber need to know, uh, you know history? Uh, so those are the things. So what we are trying to do here is that each of the levels for a different set of job roles that you actually saw here is define knowledge competencies, attitude competencies um, in a manner that we can build a system that integrates it uh, with the education system uh, going forward. And what we are trying to do is catch them young, skill them early, and not provide them with an alternate plus two kind of a route, but integrate it into class eight, nine, 10, and 11. And industry, government, and uh, you know, we give a joint certificate, which actually uh, through an IT system uh, tracks the person throughout his career. Now what's happening is that <clears throat> the engagement model is very interesting. A lot of you in your schools find it difficult to find professionals who could deliver skill training or competency training and most uh, uh, governments don't actually uh, allow uh, this to be funded. So there is a scheme by which uh, some funding is available, but what people do is that the jobs and uh, sectors and job roles are identified, uh, curriculum and training is delivered by NSDC partners such as uh, Centum, and industry visits and on-the-job training is actually uh, uh, given. Assessment and certification is done uh, by the Sector Skill Council, the State Board, and CBSC. Um, and the whole process is done in a collaborative uh, manner and not necessarily gives you employability and entrepreneurship uh, abilities as well. A lot of us think that you know, vocational training in school is a challenge because it doesn't fit into the timetable. It's an additional subject. It is something else there. But you know, I, I just go back to my own school days, and till the 10th, I actually learned batik. I learned carpentry. I learned clay modeling. I can still do batik. I can still put a chair, or chair is difficult, but a table uh, together. It's something which I learned, and I'm sure if I'm not employed in NSDC, I can eke out a living uh, doing something. Uh, so that's the, that's the thing that we actually want to do, and you know, working with our hands. You know, we know of Isaac Newton, right? But Isaac Newton was mint master. And one of his greatest contributions to the world was how to eliminate forgery of mint coins. We only think of, you know, so all those people, uh, whether it's Edison or even, you know, uh, all scientists and scientists and uh, people in India all work with their hands. So how do you integrate skills with ac academics uh, going forward? It's actually happening quite a lot. Uh, in Haryana, 240 schools, Himachal Pradesh, 200 schools. These are the schools that are there. And interestingly, uh, close to about 2.5 lakh students will uh, be engaged in the system. And hopefully by next year, it'll go to all 29 states and more schools that are, uh, that are actually wanting to do this can partner. We also have an, uh, we also have an arrangement with which CBSE schools have been doing. We are hoping to sign the MOU today, but there is a slight complication in that. But the work has started some time ago, although the MOU has not uh, uh, been signed and about 50,000 uh, kids are going to be uh, uh, encouraged and empowered in this way. So what we actually do is a very interesting uh, role uh, of NSDC, the Sector Skill Councils and Training uh, Partners. And the results, uh, you know, if I were to talk of the Haryana pilot, which was there, um, students are now not dropping out of school. Students are more encouraged to actually continue in school. And interestingly, in case the person you know, passes his 12th and does not get into college, he actually has a certificate that can get him a job, uh, which, 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 is, which, is, uh, uh, which actually the, the parents enjoy that more. In fact, the classic story that we have is that this parent from Sonipat came to our office with sweets, and we were tracking his son, and he had actually failed in the 12th. Now, it's uh, 
Very interesting, why will a father come with sweets to the office if his student has failed in the 12th? But because he did retails and computer, he got a job in Vijay sales as a cashier. And his income was more than the income of the family. And then other parents saw that uh, and actually promoted that uh, going forward. Now, uh, the interesting placement in retail, uh, you know, this is the story that I gave, security, retail, IT, ITS, and automotive. And the companies, including Bharati Retail and others, have actually taken uh, part in this. So this is going, like I said, across different schools. Universities, Delhi University has actually also implemented it. Uh, school boards, like I said, CBSC and NIOS are looking at, uh, NIOS is doing one lakh in Delhi, and the CBSC schools are actually doing that. So we also hope, you know, to partner with countries, and this is a picture of the Australian Prime Minister, and he signed an MOU uh, recently, where they will recognize the certification coming up, and it would give them possible admission into uh, education uh, courses there or having a job profile there. The challenge in India in which all of us need to work together is that the university system is currently delinked with the skill system, but I'm sure it will happen because we are introducing a BWOC program going forward. So what is it that we can do? You know, parents and children are not aware, so can we help and create awareness? Can we look at creating and integrating competency-based even education and curriculum and schools, I'm not only talking of skills, right? Can we look at the vocational trainers being vocational uh, and skills being introduced in the school system? And can we look at seventh and eighth classes where we take students to go and visit, uh, you know, different industries or different arts and crafts? I was with Image Creative, another one of our partners in Chennai and they teach photography to class four students. And I said, isn't that too young? And then I remember that my nephew, who is all of four years old, knows how to operate an iPhone and take photographs. So I think, you know, catching them young and integrating them is something we need to do. And all of us in this room have the uh, opportunity to identify potential, discuss opportunities with parents, counsel children, and encourage participation and actually develop a respect for skills. So it is because we tend to glamorize engineering, medicine, and a college degree. Parents and students aspire for that and don't respect skills. So it's a huge social challenge uh, going forward. And all of you with your tremendous intellect, leadership, and capability to execute things on the ground can actually make this change happen and transform lives of millions of people uh, in India. So thank you very much. And as Professor Prahlad said, possibly the time, is, uh, the time to act is now, and the leadership is in your hands. So thank you, uh, Sanjeev, for this opportunity, and thank you, Kamini. Thank you. <laughs>